Hello and welcome to the Maths 2 component of the online BSc program on data science and programming. In this video, we are going to talk about limits for functions of one variable. So, we have seen the notion of limits for a sequence of real numbers and in this video, we are going to build on that idea and talk about limits for a function. Okay, so, let us start with some examples. So, let us recall that if you have a convergent sequence a n tending to a, we obtain that a n squared tends to a squared. This was one of the properties that we discussed that if you have two convergent sequences a n tends to a and b n tends to b, then a n times b n tends to a times b. So, if you in particular that tells you that a n squared tends to a squared and uh, in more generally we use this to talk about polynomials and so on. Okay, so, a n squared tends to a squared. So, we can think of this in a different way. Consider the function f of x is x squared, then we can rewrite the above statement as f of a n tends to f of a whenever a n tends to a, right? Because what is f of a n? A n f of a n is a n squared and what is f of a? It is a squared. So, essentially this statement is saying that whenever a n tends to a, then a n squared tends to a squared. So, we can write, so this is an equivalent formulation. So, we can think of this as talking about the limit at a of the function f of x equals x squared. Okay? And this video is going to talk about uh, different kinds of functions and uh, how to think about limits uh, as you have a sequence of points approaching a particular point. How does the corresponding sequence of function values behave? Okay. So, before we go ahead, maybe let us uh, let us qualify this statement uh, over here. So, let us look at this, uh, uh, let us look at this, uh, uh, the graph of the function f of x is x squared. So, you can see that in the picture here. So, as n increases, we are going to have a sequence of points, which will be from q 1, which is 3 comma 0 and which should approach p. So, we are talking going to talk about the limit of this uh, uh, function at the value at the value 2. So, p is 2 comma 0 and the function value which is uh, on the graph. So, that is 2 comma f of 2 which is 2 squared which is 4. So, this is the point a 2 comma 4 and we will also have the function value of q 1 uh, sorry the function value q 1 of um, of this point p, which if I decrease, yeah. So, if I zoom out, you see this point 3 comma 9, that is the point uh, uh, b 1. Okay. So, you will see that this as I as I move this slider, it uh, quickly starts moving towards this point. Yeah, it is very fast in fact. So, you can see as the slider as n is increasing, this point that we started with is coming closer and closer and closer to p. Yeah, so, q 1 is moving towards p and the corresponding function value is moving towards the point a, which is the uh, corresponding po point on the graph to the point uh, 2 comma 0 to the point p. Okay. So, what is this saying? This is saying that as this sequence comes closer and closer to the point 2, its function value approaches the function value of the point 2. So, that, that is a statement uh, that we made f of a n tends to f of a. So, a n squared tends to a squared, where here a is equal to 2. Okay? So, here we have a uh, value coming from the right. So, let us uh, stop this for a second and instead of this, let us look at uh, something which comes from the left. q 2 is this point 1 comma 0 right now. So, that is when the value n 1 is 1. As n 1 changes, you will see that this point starts moving closer and closer. Okay? So, we will uh, uh, we'll keep track of both these points, the point 1 comma 0 and how the point 1 comma 1 is going to move. Okay, so, let me play this uh, animation. Okay, so, you can see the values 1.93, 1.938, 1.939, 1 1.94 and the corresponding values for the fu function values are 3.77, 3.7. 3.777. So, they are coming closer and closer and closer to 
the point 4. So, if you go long uh, for a long enough time, you will eventually come very, very, very close to 4. Okay, I, I stopped it at uh, uh, 50,000, but um, uh, yeah, we could we could keep playing it uh, uh, for longer. Okay, so again, you can see that you have a function, uh, you have a sequence coming from the left this time, and uh, the same thing happens that if you take the function value, it approaches the value of the function at the point two. Okay, this was the statement that we made uh, in the slide. Okay, so let's uh, go back to our uh, slides. So, f of a n tends to f of a whenever a n tends to a and we saw this in two particular cases. Uh, we had two particular sequences tending to 2 and in both cases uh, the geometry clearly showed us that this is true. Okay. So, is this a more general phenomenon? So, instead let us contrast the behavior of the function f of x is x squared with the uh, behavior of the function which is called the floor function g of x is floor of x. So, what is floor of x? The uh, largest integer which is less than the number that you have. Okay. So, if you have minus 6.5, the largest such integer which is less than that is minus 7. Okay. So, it is the integer part when your numbers are positive and it is one below the integer part when uh, they are negative. Okay. So, let us uh, uh, look at what happens in this case. So, if one takes a sequence a n decreasing to 2, then indeed g of a n tends to g of 2 which is 2. Okay. Let us see if uh, this is indeed the case. So, here is our step function. So, uh, this is the function that we have the floor function. So, you can see that for values between two integers, it takes the same value. right? It's, it looks like a bunch of steps. We have seen this example in a previous video. Okay. So, between 3 and 4 for example, the value is uh, equal to 3. So, if you have 3.5, then the value of the function is 3. If you have 3.98, the value is 3. But at 4, it jumps. It jumps to this value 4. Okay. So, at every integer, there is a jump and after that, it is constant. So, it is like a step function. So, what we are going to do is, uh, let us check the statement that we made that if you approach this for a sequence, uh, approach the value 2, uh, from the right, then then indeed uh, it works out. So, right. So let's look at uh, this one here. So once I start animating this, there is a sequence that I've written down. You can see it on the left. It's two plus one by one plus log of n one to the power one point one. So the corresponding point is this point uh, q one. And its function value, meaning its its point, the corresponding point in the graph is this point S1. So keep track of what is happening to Q1 and S1. Okay, as I play this animation. Okay, so as I play this animation, you can see it went very very quickly towards P, and now it's going further and further uh, towards P, and it's come very 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 close. So you can see that uh, as Q1 comes close to P, S1 comes close to this point r which in other word means other words means uh, that the function value uh, is is uh, going to be very close to or in in this case actually it is the same as the function value of uh, p okay so that was the statement in the previous in this slide if one takes a sequence an decreasing to 2 then indeed g of an tends to g of 2 now, let us uh, look at what happens if you take a sequence increasing to 2. But if you take a sequence increasing to 2, then g of a n tends to 1. Why is that? Well, let us look at this point s and this point q. So, q is going to tend towards p from the left yeah, and uh, uh, the corresponding function value will be given by this, this uh, whatever is happening on this line here. So, if I switch on my animation, you can see s is uh, going towards the uh, vertical, but it is on a different horizontal. Okay? So, the value of s meaning the function value is 1, see 1.95398 comma 1, let us play that again. Okay? So, if I play that again, 
right you can keep track of the value it's 1.94733 comma 1 1.95086 comma 1 9.52.6 comma 1 so the point is because it's increasing towards 2 it will never take the value 2 actually so it's it's going to remain between uh, after some time it will remain between 1 and 2 and so the function value will always continue to be 1 so this function g of an will always be 1. So, it cannot be in the limit, it cannot be, it is not 2. Yeah. So, this phenomenon of uh, f of a n tends to f of a whenever a n tends to a is special and uh, you can see in, in terms of the graphs what is the difference. Here in the graphs there is a jump whereas, in our previous uh, graph which was x squared, it is a very nice, yeah, very nice uh, function. Okay. So, uh, so, the, the limit allows you to pick up things like this, whether there are breaks and so on and that is really why we are studying limits. right? So, remember that we started our study of limits uh, after the video on tangents because we said the tangent is a uh, tricky idea because you have to study things as they come close to something. right? When you come close to a point, how does, how does the uh, curve look like? right and uh, so we need this idea of limits ok so coming back here this idea that f of a n tends to f of a whenever a n tends to a gives you an idea of whether there is a jump at the point a or not fine so let's uh, uh, make this remark that for gx this happens at each integer value and if a is a non integer value right so suppose instead of 2 you we did this for 1.5 so, if you do it for 1.5, then from both sides you can see that the function value is going to be 1. right? So, if you take any non-integer point, there would not be any problem. So, this and that reflects in the fact that all the jumps are at the integer points. Okay. So, at, at the non-integer points, g of a n does tend to g of a whenever a n tends to a. Let us look at some other examples. Uh, some of these are kind of pathological cases, but it is important to keep this in mind because it helps you to prevent making mistakes. It, it, it uh, sort of whenever you want to make a statement, you can quickly run these examples past and see if you are making any mistake. Okay, so, here is a very strange looking function, uh, maybe a function that we are not very used to because for us functions are usually things given by nice looking uh, expressions. right? So, here there is no good expression for this function. So, this function takes the value 1 if x is a rational number and it takes the value 0 if x is not a rational number. So, you cannot draw this function. Okay? This function is very, uh, yeah, it is it, not something that you can really graph and that that is really the point of this function. But you can see that it has lots of uh, jumps. In fact, it has jumps everywhere. right? So, the you would expect that uh, this limits there will be some problem and indeed there is. So, let us recall that root 2 is an irrational number. This is maybe something you have done before. Uh, if I remember right, it is done in school, but if you do not remember, please go back and uh, try to see why this is the case. So, root 2 is an irrational number, meaning you cannot write it as m by n, where m and n are integers. So, the value of uh, f at root 2 is going to be 0, it is not a rational number. So, we can construct a sequence of rational numbers which tends to root 2 and I will tell you in a minute how to do that. So, what is the point? Once you construct such a sequence, f of a n will be 1 because each of those a n's will be rational numbers. So, for rational numbers the function value is 1, but f of root 2 is 0 because root 2 is not a rational number. So, even though a n tends to root 2, f of a n does not tend to f of root 2. Okay. So, this of course, depends on the fact that there is a rational sequence, sequence of rational numbers which approaches root 2 or which tends to root 2. So, why is that? Let me quickly qualify that statement. So, you see root 2 has a decimal expansion, it is infinite by, uh, by we know that because it is not a rational number. If it is a rational, if it is finite, it would, it must be a rational number. And if you remember the first few digits, it goes something like 1.414 and then so on. right? So, what you do is you take let us say a 1 to be 1.4, then you take a 2 to be 
1.41 and now all, both of these have uh, only finite decimal expansions which means they must be rational numbers. So, for example, why is this a rational number 1.4? Because you can write it as 14 by 10. Why is 1.41 a rational number? You can write it as 141 by 100 and I hope the general idea is clear. So, once you have a finite, only a finite number of uh, digits after your decimal place, they must be rational numbers. Take A3 to be 1.414 and you get the general idea I think now. So, in general if you want A n, A n is the number obtained by taking the first n terms after the decimal place or decimal point sorry in root 2. Okay, that is a n right. So, a 1 is 1.4, a 2 is 1.41, a 3 is 1.414 and you can clearly see that as a n uh, uh, the in the limit uh, a n is going to tend to uh, whatever dec decimal expansion you have for root 2 and hence it will be root 2. Okay, so, there is indeed a sequence of rational numbers which tends to root 2 and because of that uh, we see that for this really strange function. Uh, f of a n does not tend to f of root 2 and uh, there is nothing special about root 2. You can actually do this for any point. So, I will uh, suggest that you, you instead of root 2 choose your favorite irrational number let us say root 3 or root 5 any one that you prefer and uh, try to see if the same thing works. Okay. Um, slightly harder is try to construct a series of a sequence of irrational numbers which tends to a rational number say try to get a sequence of uh, irrational numbers which tends to 1 ok try see if you can think about that ok or to 0 ok. So, this function uh, there are plenty of sequences which tend to a particular number, but f of those sequences do not tend to f of that number ok. So, this this phenomenon of uh, a sequence uh, when you apply f, it uh, uh, has the same limit as uh, f of a is kind of special. Okay. So, let us look at uh, let us look at two definitions limit of a function at a point from the left. So, we need to make these definitions because of what we saw happening for the step function. Okay. So, what is the limit of a function at a point from the left? So, let f be a function and a be a point such that a n tends to a where a n belongs to the domain of the definition of f. So, uh, this is only to say that there, uh, there are sequences which tend to this point. If there are no sequences which tend to this point, then we cannot really talk about whatever phenomenon we are interested in. Okay. So, if there is a real number l such that f of a n tends to l for all sequences a n such that a n tends to a and a n is strictly less than a. So, which is why we are saying from the left. So, when a is less than a that means it approaches a from the left. Then we say that the limit of f at a from the left exists and equals l. Okay. So, we denote this by x tends to a minus f of x is l and if there is no such number l then we say that the limit of f at, uh, at a from the left does not exist. Okay. So, an equivalent way of thinking of a limit x tends to a minus f of x is equal to l is that as x comes closer and closer to this point a from the left f of x eventually comes closer and closer to l. Okay. So, keep this keep this equivalence in mind. So, once we understand this equivalence we can go beyond we go we can go past talking about sequences okay. and which we are going to do uh, I mean in the next lectures we, we will stop thinking about sequences we will think about it in this, in this way that if if you are uh, if you come closer and closer to this uh, point a from the left then uh, f of x comes closer and closer eventually to the number l. Okay. So, the same thing can be done from the right. So, I will just quickly go through this. Similarly, if there is a real number r such that f of a n tends to r for all sequences a n such that a n tends to a and a n greater than a, then we say that the limit of f at a from the right exists and equals r. 
So, we denote this by limit extends to a plus f of x is l and if no such number exists, we say the limit of f at a from the right does not exist and an equivalent way of thinking of limit extends to a plus f x is r is that as x comes closer and closer to uh, a from the right, uh, f of x eventually comes closer and closer to r. Okay. So, let us quickly put these two together to define what is the limit and then we look at plenty of examples. So, limit of the fun limit of a function at a point. So, let f be a function and a be a point such that a n tends to a where a n belongs to the domain of definition of f. I want to just point out that in the previous two definitions, we never assumed anything about a being in the domain of definition. Okay. So, a need not be f need not be defined at a. Okay. We will see examples of such things before. All we need is that there is a sequence a n ten which tends to a and f is defined on that sequence. Okay. So, suppose the limit of f at a from both sides uh, exists and uh, both of them are equal. So, which means limit extends to a minus f of x is equal to limit extends to a plus of f of x. So, that l that we had and the r that we had both of them match. So, l is equal to r. Then we say that the limit of f at a exists and equals the uh, left and the right limit. So, which is l or r. Okay, It is that number. Okay. So, we denote it by limit extends to a f of x. So, let us quickly uh, recall our uh, uh, examples from before. So, the first example that we did was x squared. So, let us ask what is limit extends to a minus of x squared. This is indeed a squared. We saw this for 2 meaning when a is 2 it was 4 and this is also the limit when you approach it from the right. So, it is still x squared. Yeah. So, this means this is equal to both of these exist and match. So, this is also equal to the limit and in this case it turns out that uh, so, if uh, f of x is x squared, so this is equal to f of a. So, uh, this is a very special function. Okay. What about the other functions? What about the ceiling, sorry the floor function? Okay. This is how we denoted the floor function. So, if you take uh, the floor function, if you take this limit, well, so now it depends on what is a. So, if your a is, an, is not an integer, then these two limits actually match, right? That is that's what we saw and they actually equal the uh, floor function of a. So, this is g of a. Okay. So, this is if a is not an integer, but if a is an integer, for example, if a is 2, then the left limit, what is the left limit? Okay, the left limit was 1 and the right limit was 2. So, these two do not match although both of them exist, but they do not match and uh, as a result uh, the limit does not exist. Okay, limit f of x, uh, limit g of x as a x approaches 2 does not exist. Okay. And let us uh, look at the example that of, of uh, the pathological example that we had where we had I think a 0 and a 1 depending on whether x was rational or not. So, q is the set of rationals and this is what the function was. So, in this case both of these limits do not exist. do not exist. Yeah, and once both of these do not exist, the limit also by definition does not exist. So, d n e stands for does not exist. Okay. So, I in this slide I should have qualified uh, what happens if, if uh, 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 when it does not exist. So, I have said when it exists. So, if these uh, properties do not are not satisfied, which means that either one of the left limit, the limit from the left or the limit from the right do not exist or both of them exist, but um, they are not equal. In that case, 
we will say that the limit does not exist okay, with, without uh, qualifying it with left or right. Okay, so, I hope the idea is clear. Uh, the idea of the limit is to pick up jumps. Okay, that is that is what limit of a function at a point is to pick up jumps. And uh, that's that's why this somewhat complicated definition is being made. Okay, uh, let's do one more case, uh, which is the case of what happens if x tends to plus or minus infinity. So, what does this mean? First of all, so let f be a function such that there is an m such that the function is defined for all x greater than m. Okay. So, we want f to be defined for all large numbers, okay, that otherwise we cannot talk about x tends to infinity, yeah, what happens to f of x. So, suppose for all sequences x n diverging to infinity, there exists L such that f of x n converges to L. So, that means as x becomes larger and larger, f of x eventually gets closer and closer to L. Then we say that limit x tends to infinity, f of x exists and equals L. Similarly, let f be a function such that there is an n such that it is defined for all x less than n. So, we want to talk about the limit as x tends to minus infinity. So, we better have that the function is defined for all very, very small values. By small, we do not mean close to 0, we mean negative, large negatives. Okay. So, suppose for all sequences x n which diverge to minus infinity we have talked about the notion of diverging to infinity and diverging to minus infinity. So, diverging to infinity means they become larger and larger and larger, diverging to minus infinity being means they become larger and larger negatives or smaller and smaller. So, suppose for all such sequences there exists L such that f of x n converges to L. So, that means x becomes smaller and smaller, then f of x eventually gets closer and closer to L. Then we say that limit x tends to infinity, f of x exists and equals L. So, you might wonder what this looks strange, I mean if, if as you are going off, why would uh, the limit exist? So, this example will tell you why. So, let us look at the function 1 by x. Okay? So, if you look at this function f of x is 1 by x, if you look at the graph, so this green uh, curve is, is the graph of this function and you can see as x increases towards uh, if, uh, as the x axis you go along the x axis towards the right, yeah, you x increases, the function comes closer and closer to the axis. What does that mean? That means, the function value is going to become close to 0. Similarly, when, when uh, x becomes small or rather it becomes large negatives, the same thing happens. The function value comes closer and closer to 0, although they are negative numbers, but they are going to be very, very, very close to 0. And in fact, the place where there is a real problem with the existence of a limit is at the point 0. You can see that at the point 0, the function uh, uh, does not, the limit does not exist. right? So, limit x tends to infinity 1 by x is 0, limit x tends to minus infinity 1 by x is 0. Right? That is what uh, we are saying when we say what happens on this side and what happens on this side. And in fact, both limit 1 by x and limit x tends to 0 uh, minus 1 by x do not exist. Yeah, on one side, you can think of the limit as diverging to, for 0 minus it diverges to minus infinity and for 0 plus it diverges to infinity. So, it does not converge. So, both of uh, them do not converge. And if you even if you allow the infinities to, to sort of exist in your world, uh, they still do not match. Okay. Fine. So, this is one of the reasons why we want to talk about uh, what happens as x tends to infinity or x tends to minus infinity. Now, this is very important in, in various uh, uh, real life phenomena. For example, you will see things like the uh, exponential distribution or the normal distribution and so on and uh, you will talk about tails of distributions. Okay. And there this, this thing about limit x tends to infinity or x tends to minus infinity, what happens is important. And uh, if you find yourself getting worried about what does that mean, that is one of the things that this video is supposed to explain to you. Okay. So, let us look at some basic examples. So, let us say k is a integer which is a positive integer and if you take limit x to the power k, 
well this is just going to be a to the power k so this is uh, so if you take f of x to be x to the power k this is f of a the limit is f, f of a so in the second one if you take limit x tends to a x to the power k where k is negative but suppose a is not zero yeah we saw that if a is zero then you could have this one by x type situation but suppose a is not zero then this limit no problem you can just write it as a to the power k similarly if you have e to the power x you take x tends to a then this is e to the power a or if you take the logarithm then this is logarithm of a so you can just substitute the value of uh, uh, the number at which you want to evaluate the limit in your function right so limit x tends to a sin x this is sin of a and limit x tends to a tan x where a is between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2 this is tan of a okay the tangent of a so these are very nice functions uh, so for for these nice looking functions the limit taking limits is rather uh, easy and even the places where limits don't exist for example if you take a is 0 and you take k is negative in the second example just by looking at the function it is clear that the limit does not exist so those are those are the kinds of functions which are nice uh, we can really talk about jumps etc just by looking at the graphs or plotting the functions so in general can we find this by substitution because that's what we did here we looked at the expression and then we just substituted the value of a right which was the point at which we were taking the limit so this comes with a huge warning that's why the beware is in red suppose we want to find the value of the limit of a function fx at the point a so that is limit x tends to a f of x we want to find this right and in the previous slide what we saw was that for many nice functions this is just f of a so you can substitute a in the expression so often we can substitute the value of a in the expression for f of x and obtain the limit unfortunately this does not work when the function gets slightly complicated or the point a does not belong to the domain of definition of f of x yeah remember that a need not belong to the domain of definition okay so here is one example uh, limit x tends to 2 x squared minus 5 x plus 6 divided by x minus 2 here is another example x limit x tends to 0 1 by x so let us uh, talk about what happens here if you substitute x is 0 in the second example this obviously does not make sense right so you cannot substitute this so this limit does not exist yeah cannot substitute does not make sense right this is our good old friend division by 0 which we know we cannot do ok and in this case it actually does not exist here if you substitute what happens let us substitute and see what happens you get 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6 divided by 2 minus 2 ah already warning bells right so this will give you the numerator is uh, 4 minus 10 plus 6 0 and the denominator is clearly 0 so you get a 0 by 0 situation this is one of the most uh, interesting situations because if you get a 0 by 0 situation unlike this situation on the right where you clearly see that you cannot substitute and the limit does not exist at all 0 by 0 situations you cannot substitute but maybe the maybe the limit exists and indeed here the limit exists because this function is actually a function that you know very well because you can solve this equation uh, you can factorize it as x minus 2 times x minus 3 divided by x minus 2 which we know is x minus 3 so actually this function is the same as the function x minus 3 well when i say same you we have to be careful there it's same for all values except if the value is 2 so at 2 this this expression the original expression is not defined at all but the expression x minus 3 is defined and it is minus 1 so what happens to this expression as uh, as uh, x approaches 2 so as you can see as x approaches 2 the expression here the limit is going to approach minus 1 so this number is going to be minus 1 ok so substitution does not work but the limit does exist 
So you can't blindly substitute. So be careful about substitution. It does work for nice functions, special functions, uh, sin x, tan x, e to the power x, polynomials and so on. But uh, in general, even for rational functions, meaning polynomial by polynomial, you have to be very, very careful of what is happening. And in a minute, we are going to see some very interesting examples. So, here is one limit x tends to 0 sin x by x is 1, this is known. Limit log of 1 plus x by x is 1, again this is something known. And I, I want to warn you that, uh, see if you substitute here, then you get sin 0 which you know is 0 by 0. So, it is a 0 by 0 situation, it, uh, it, it does not make sense. So, it is, but unlike the previous situation, where here you could quickly uh, resolve this difficulty by, by factorizing and so on, here there is no really good way of, of uh, doing it unless you know something more about these functions. Okay, and I will show you in a minute why this is true. Similarly, if you take log of 1 plus x by x, yeah, where you get a 0 by 0 situation and then we have the third example, which is limit x tends to infinity of a plus b times e to the power x divided by c plus d times e to the power x, this is b by d. Okay, so, let us look at the first uh, one to start with. So, we have a small animation here, which I hope will convey something to you. Uh, so, the, uh, so, what are these numbers? So, this number, uh, so forget the, yeah, let me highlight the things that we need to start with. So, let us uh, get rid of these three, yeah. So, these three you have a, you have n, then this is the left hand side is a sequence, uh, which tends to, uh, so this is sin of 1 by n and out here is sin of 1 by n divided by 1 by n, yeah. So, the left hand side is sin 1 by, sin 1 by n and the right hand side is 1, sin 1 by n by 1 by n. As we know 1 by n tends to 0. So, let us see what, what happens to the right hand side. So, you should keep your eye on what happens to the right hand number, right. So, let us play this animation. Ah, it is already become 1. You can see it is, it is uh, moving so fast, it is already become 1. Yeah, so as it comes closer and closer, it is, it is uh, not changing at all, okay, right. So, let us play the other one. So, so this is uh, another sequence which is minus 1 by 1 plus log of uh, m to the power 1.1. So, this is a sequence which tends to uh, uh, 0 and this is sin, so, so the d here is sin of this by itself, right. So, let us see what happens to that. Yeah, so you can see what is happening 0.999. 0 0.99946, 0 0.99947 and we have stopped. So, let us see what happens at the end. So, at the end you have 0 0.9995. So, fairly close and if you keep going, it is going to come closer and closer and closer, right. So, this is at least a demonstration that uh, sin x by x, as you approach it, we saw two sequences which uh, approach 0 and then we computed sin x by x for those those two sequences and we saw, saw that for both of them it comes very close to 1. So, that is some heuristic uh, I mean some demonstration that it is close to 1, but we can give a more uh, sort of geometric argument which is um, if you take sin x by x, well here is here is your arc. So, you have to do this in radians of course. Uh, so, uh, if this number is x, right. So, this is uh, x. So, you take the unit circle. So, this is uh, the unit circle and you take this arc, uh, which is uh, of x radians. So, these are both of length 1. So, if you drop this perpendicular, uh, what you get is, um, so this is, this is the hypotenuse which is 1, this is 90 degrees and so the opposite side is sin x. So, this, this length is sin x, right. 
and then if you compute uh, sin x by x from from this from this picture, uh, you will see that uh, it is bounded on both sides by one on one side. So clearly, it's less than one. Yeah, and you can also give something on the right, which is going to tend to one. Okay, which I I'm not elucidating right now. Uh, we will see this kind of argument again later. Uh, and then both sides go to 1, so the middle thing goes to 1. This is like your sandwich principle that we have seen uh, in for uh, limits of sequences. So, once we do that, I will uh, come back to this argument, okay. But this is the idea. So, there is there is a there is a way of doing this even geometrically. So, let us look at the second example here. For the second example, like the first example of sin x by x, we have no direct way of computing this. So, the only way to do this as of now is to really check the limits uh, based on some sequence uh, like we did for sin x by x and uh, convince ourselves that indeed it goes to 1. And this proof will be uh, more formally done in the next video uh, and it will be based on the inequalities that if you take log of 1 plus x by x you can bound it on both sides on one side by 1 and on the other side by 1 over 1 plus x. So, we will see this uh, in detail in the next video how to use this fact to obtain that the limit is 1. The third one I can give some justification. So, you can write this as limit. Huh. So, what can I substitute? Okay, Let us first ask that. So, if I substitute x is infinity, if you can see that uh, both numerator and denominator are infinity. So, that is not going to give me anything. Okay. So, instead what I can do is I can multiply both sides by e to the power minus x. So, or take e to the power x common. So, if you do that, you get a times e to the power minus x plus b divided by c times e to the power minus x plus d. Now, indeed, I can take the limit because if I substitute now as x tends to infinity, what happens to e to, e to the power minus x? Well, e to the power minus x is very much like your 1 by x function. We have seen this, this function actually before. So, it, it goes to 0 very, very, very fast. Okay. And so, if you take x tends to infinity e to the power minus x is going to 0. So, you can substitute you get a times 0 plus b divided by c times 0 plus d and indeed this is b by d. So, this is a justification. So, what we are saying is that it is possible to substitute sometimes, but you cannot always do it. And in fact, for, for the uh, you may have that for a particular expression you cannot substitute, but then when you change your expression you can substitute. Okay. And much of uh, understanding limits is really understanding when you can do this. Okay. So, that is the uh, gist of limits uh, for a function. Uh, let me end by talking about the continuity of a function at a point, this is a definition. Let f be a function and a be a point such that a n tends to a, where a n and a belong to the domain of f. So, now remember that a does belong to the domain of f that is we are talking only at such points. Then the function f is said to be continuous at the point a if limit x tends to a f of x is equal to f of a. Okay. So, continuity means the limit at a can be obtained by evaluating the function at a. So, I will I will uh, highlight the fact that I have written the word evaluating and not substituting. Why, why do I distinguish between these two? When we say substitute that means you have some expression for that function and you are substituting in that expression. Okay. So, that may or may not be possible that is what we have seen, but you can evaluate. So, the evaluation may make sense. Sometimes that is because you can change the expression and get a slightly different looking function uh, which is effectively the same function and then you can evaluate or sometimes the function may not have an expression, but you can still evaluate. Okay. So, for example, if you if you look at the function um, let us define the function f of x which is sin x by x. So, of course, this expression does not make sense at 0. So, at 0 you define it to be 1, then indeed you can you can uh, say that this function is continuous at 0 and you can obtain it uh, uh, that is the same as saying that you obtain the limit as x tends to 0 by evaluating at f of it at 0 which is 1. Okay. Okay. So, I guess uh, I will just quickly recap what we, we have done in this video. We have uh, 
studied the notion of uh, the limit of a function at a point and we have uh, uh, used it, we have used the notion of the left limit and the right limit meaning as sequences approach from the left and sequences approach from the right. So, for the left limit we need that for all sequences which approach from the left the, the there is some number l such that the function value tends to that number l for all sequences yeah not for a few sequences not for some particular sequence for all sequences. Similarly, for the right uh, f of a n should tend to some number r then the limit uh, from the right exists and if those two numbers match then the limit exists and uh, if it actually equals the value of the function at that point then uh, we say that the function is continuous at that point. Thank you.